What's going on ladies and gentlemen? It's time for us to take a look at what came out this past weekend. Five recently released albums that you should certainly check out and we're basically at the end of this season or this year whenever it comes to this series. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for making this series not only a success but also you know, kind of encouraging me to continue it with a lot of you saying that this has become your favorite series on the channel. I really appreciate that. We might have a couple things spotty to talk about for the rest of December, but the focus is going to primarily be on other lists. So without further ado, let's end this season right with five recently released albums that you should certainly scope out. And the first one that we're going to talk about is Rebel in Flesh with their brand new album, A Mystery of All Plagues. This is an album that has a lot of tactfulness to it. It's one that also has a lot of the death metal charm that really is very recognizable quite easily. Uh, this is a band that is basically an up-and-comer. Usually whenever we talk about death metal, it seems to be a bigger band or one that's a little bit more well-known, but this is one that if you dig the death metal sound in the classic variety, not really adding on a lot of some of that new style charm that you get with some of the hybrid genres that Rebel and Flesh may be for you. And you'll really notice this with the title track uh, really calling things off and starting things off very well. A 3 minute and 41 second death metal assault, but then you have to also take a look at Fortress of Gloom and Servants of the Death, Go uh, death Cult uh, to really showcase some of that old school charm that really gives this album a lot of its flavor, a lot of its moxie, and gives it something really special. I also dig the fact that some of the longest tracks happen to be right there near the end of the album, with the longest one dead to those, this world being six and a half minutes Time that is well spent, time that is well used, some good soloing, uh, and really just... This is an album that just really screams old school death metal charm. Really like this a lot, and know you will too. Up next we have Bethlehem with their self-titled album. This is a very interesting classic German metal project, one that started off with a little bit more of a black and death metal approach, and has since really emerged into a little bit more of an experimental group that still holds true some of those prior ideas. This is an album that all of the song titles are German, so you're not going to hear me try to represent them. So on a general note whenever it comes to this band that you're going to really enjoy is the fact that no two songs really feel like they have the same sound to them. There are some that have a lot more fierce aggression, almost to the point of thrash at sometimes with the heaviness of the riff, but that's something that certainly is more so attuned to their old black metal veneer of old. But also there's a lot of theatrics that you get with this album. This is a band that certainly has a bit of a flair for the dramatic, almost as though they are making some sort of avant-garde stage show to go right alongside of the album itself. It is a strange package. It is also based around that a very endearing package, something that doesn't exactly have the same note twice really pulled. Some of these vocals are absolutely ear shredding and based around that it could be seen or heard with that term as a bad thing, but it only adds to some of the charm that this is able to deliver. If you like your metal weird, but still having a little bit of a resemblance to some of the traditional genres of old, then check out Bethlehem. I have a feeling that you're really going to enjoy this. Staying with the theme of black metal, we have Sarkham with Anti-Cosmic Art. Whoa, okay, this is one that definitely has that old school philosophy sort of draped all over it, although with much tighter production. That's the one thing that this album really has going for it. This is a seven track affair with some pretty unique song titles, including the very first one, Previous Associates, now it's Targets for the Gun. Definitely have to dig that. This is very direct and it's one that is able to really shift up the balance between being absolutely violent and destructive to also just using the speed and the pace to steamroll over its opponents, its opposition, as well as its fan base. Definitely have to dig a track such as Seen Through the eyes of a pedophile priest, which just sounds so inertly black metal and inertly anti-Christian that it definitely will satisfy all of those that are looking within that department. This is a seven track affair, really there's only six new songs considering track seven is a cover of Sodom's Sodomy and Lust, a great cover at that, as it only lasts about 30 minutes, it's a quick listen, and one that if you need a quick fix of old school anti-Christian black metal, just go on and Cue this sucker up and just go to town. Scope it. Hollow Earth with Dead Planet. This is quite interesting, I have to say. This has some metalcore, maybe, some gen. There's tribal influence. There's progressive. There's a little bit of extreme metal here and there. It's really a hard release to sort of pinpoint and pin down. And 
that's kind of what makes it a bit of a you know curious work. It's one that has so many different things going on that give it a little bit of charm or a little bit of uniqueness that it really offers a lot to a listener. There are some really good usages of that tribal influence where you hear a lot of the repetition in some of these songs. Uh, the composition really grants a lot of that sort of heaviness, either that or a real, you know, sort of reflection toward a overall culture. I don't even know if Dead Planet's meant to be, it's, a, it's got a sci-fi theme to it, obviously, but I'm wondering if this is meant to be sort of like this reflective journey past where uh, the planet was, you know, active point of being destroyed or no longer being viable and now we have sort of this these sort of cosmic cavemen that are reflecting within their tribes of what caused the existence uh, or should I say the destruction of the existence of their previous planet it gives it a lot of charm it does open the doors for a lot of different thoughts and the album itself is pretty solid as well really love what the harbinger of existence is able to deliver because you have sort of this very uh, suited rhythm throughout all of the second track which is Astral Dominion uh, but then it just changes up on this track and whenever that uh, difference hits man it just crushes you it's one that has a lot to offer Scope this one out. It's curious, but I think you'll dig it. Worm Ouroboros with what graceless dawn will conclude our year, potentially. And this is certainly a unique one uh, to conclude on. These guys are a post-metal and experimental band. One that definitely offers more so on the side of the soft as opposed to the four that perhaps we talked about preceding this. And really, whenever I think about this, I think about 40 Watt Sun a little bit, how that was very doomy, but also extremely silent. It had a little bit more of a pull to its punch, and that's what actually caused it to be such a powerful and potent doom album. It gave it a lot of just a true melancholic approach. This is one that aims a little bit more for that post-metal bliss idea, and really you hear female vocals that sort of cascade around these very simplistic, almost minimalist ideas that then eventually will crash and become something much larger, the bombastic nature that uh, you really attain whenever those few moments hit, usually about one per track, and that's even pushing it, certainly offers a very fitting crescendo for tracks that feel like it is it got a little bit of tension throughout the entirety of it, so there's beauty and tension, which is a strange duality that actually leads to a lot of you know, very prestigious sound. It's one that has Worm Ouroboros kind of on the cusp of sounding and feeling like there's something special that they really are going to make a move. I think this is a disc that certainly should be examined by those who really enjoy sort of the post-metal side of the coin, maybe even a little bit of, uh, of, of uh, post-black metal. They may even enjoy this even though it might be a little bit too soft for your taste. It still just has a really unique register and it's not what you expect from a band with a name such as Worm Ouroboros, you almost expect them to be some sort of insane extreme metal band. So that curiosity certainly is worth the price of admission by itself. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, five recently released albums that you definitely should examine. It's been a great year. I want to thank you all once again for coming on board. For those of you who have said this has become your favorite series, I love you guys. I will continue this whenever 2017 ramps up, which should be... Hopefully the middle portion of January, so only about a month break. Uh, thanks again. I'm Cover Killer Nation. I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Hey, everybody. Thanks for scoping out the video. If you want to watch the rest of the episodes of this first season, scope out the link to your left. The link to your right is going to take you to the 50 metal bands that you absolutely need to know, part one. So scope that out as well. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and you want to now. And check out my Patreon. Thanks again for a great year. Take care.